step back into the glitz and glamour of 1930 with a cinematic gem that's a blend of comedy, drama, and a touch of the unexpected. Directed by Cecil B. Dimmel, this film unfolds a tale that's as funny as it is shocking and at times even a little heart-wrenching. Wondering how a movie from nearly a century ago can still captivate audiences today? Well, there's something about it that transcends time. Have you ever experienced a film that left you questioning your own life choices or maybe had you laughing at unexpected moments? As you watch, keep an eye out for those surprising twists that might just make you question the norms of society. And here's the kicker, there are numerous funny, shocking, and sad facts about this classic that you probably didn't know. So buckle up and stay tuned. Now I'm curious, has this movie ever influenced your life in a peculiar way? Perhaps there's a particular scene or moment etched into your memory? Share your stories with us below. We're eager to hear about your cherished memories and personal experiences related to this timeless classic. Remember, the comments section awaits your tales of laughter, shock, and perhaps a hint of sadness. Your stories make the movie come alive in a whole new way. So spill the beans on those moments. And that's a wrap for now. Keep those stories coming. Madam Satan, a 1930 film directed by Cecil B. Demmel, stands as a classic example of a cult film. In the early days of sound cinema, experimental endeavors were prevalent. While some films have endured, many are relegated to the realms of historical curiosity. Demmel's second MGM production is one such peculiar cinematic creation, remembered for its eccentricity. Set against the backdrop of the early Depression era, the movie attempts a drawing-room comedy exploring infidelity among the affluent. However, the script appears woefully unfunny and dated even for its time. Performances by the actors are deemed embarrassing and the lead actress struggles to breathe life into her role. The narrative unfolds in two distinct halves. The initial segment, characterized by a lengthy and lackluster party setup, fails to engage the audience with humor or intrigue. A supporting actress injects some energy into the otherwise stayed first half. Still, it is the second half, featuring a surreal party on a zeppelin, that remains etched in memory. Demel's extravagant vision, showcased through impressive costume and set designs, is unfortunately marred by the lack of color. The extravagant Zeppelin sequence, while visually spectacular, comes across as surreal and indulgent, perhaps too extravagant for its Depression-era audience. The sheer opulence on screen hints at a questionable allocation of resources during economically challenging times. The release of the film in color might have further accentuated the grandeur, while the movie may have its moments of interest and curiosity, it is not without its flaws. The juxtaposition of infidelity and opulence during a period of economic downturn might have left contemporary audiences puzzled. The film's eccentricities, while making it a cult item, may not have resonated well with the sensibilities of its time. In conclusion, this cinematic piece offers a glimpse into the experimental spirit of early sound cinema and Demo's audacious vision. Despite its shortcomings, it remains an intriguing artifact of a bygone cinematic era. Madam Satan, a cinematic venture directed by Cecil B. Demmel in 1930, stands as a testament to MGM's ambitious foray into musical extravagance during a challenging economic period. This production, touted as the studio's most expensive film in 1930, held that distinction until The Merry Widow in 1934. The film's ballet mechanique scenes, shot in the multicolor two-strip process, showcased Demel's penchant for lavishness. Unfortunately, the color sequences, marked by extra-intensive lighting, are lost to time, with no surviving prints as of 2022. Having left Paramount in pursuit of improved financial terms, Demel entered a three-picture deal with MGM. Madam Satan was the second installment in this arrangement, following Dynamite. However, its lackluster reception at the box office marked the end of Demel's stint with MGM, leading him back to Paramount to conclude the deal with the Squawman. This cinematic curiosity from the early sound era attempted to weave a drawing room comedy around themes of infidelity among the affluent during the Depression era. However, the script's lack of humor and the perceived embarrassment in the performances left audiences unimpressed. The initial party setup, drawn out and uninspiring, struggled to engage viewers until a supporting actress injected a much-needed spark. The movie's second half, featuring a surreal party aboard a Zeppelin, is a visual spectacle marred by the absence of color. 
The opulence on display, while impressive, raises questions about resource allocation during economically challenging times. The film's eccentricities, though making it a cult item, may not have resonated well with its contemporary audience, particularly given the juxtaposition of infidelity and opulence amid a downturn. Madam Satan remains an intriguing artifact, reflecting the experimental spirit of early sound cinema and Demel's audacious vision. Despite its flaws, it stands as a vivid snapshot of a bygone cinematic era, exploring themes that, perhaps, were too audacious for its time. Lillian Roth, on loan from Paramount, stepped into the world of Madame Satan, a 1930 cinematic venture directed by Cecil B. Demel. The film marked the debut of Catherine Demel, the director's daughter, in the role of one of Henry VIII's wives during an airship's costume party. Interestingly, two songs, This Is Love by Herbert Stothart and Clifford Gray and Satan's Song by Jack King and Elsie Janies, were composed but never found their way into the soundtrack. This musical exclusion adds a layer of curiosity to the movie's production, leaving audiences to wonder how these tunes might have complemented or altered the viewing experience. The film unfolds as an experiment in cinematic extravagance during a time of economic hardship. MGM's costliest production of 1930 delves into a drawing room comedy exploring infidelity among the affluent during the Depression era. Demel's decision to shoot ballet mechanique scenes in the multicolor two-strip process, although lost to time, reflects his inclination towards opulence. Despite its ambition, the movie faced lackluster reception, leading to the end of Demel's three-picture deal with MGM. The initial party setup, criticized for its length and lack of engagement, received a much-needed boost from a supporting actress. The second half, featuring a surreal Zeppelin party, showcased the director's extravagant vision, albeit hindered by the absence of color. Madam Satan, while a captivating artifact of early sound cinema, raises questions about resource allocation in a period of economic downturn. The juxtaposition of infidelity and opulence set against the backdrop of a Zeppelin party may have been too audacious for its contemporary audience. In conclusion, the film stands as a peculiar blend of ambition and flaws offering a vivid snapshot of a bygone cinematic era. It's a testament to Demel's audacious vision and the experimental spirit of early sound cinema, leaving audiences with lingering questions about what might have been. In the realm of early sound cinema, Madame Satan, directed by Cecil B. Demel in 1930, presents a unique blend of ambition and flaws. As MGM's costliest production of its time, the cinematic venture plunged into a drawing room comedy exploring infidelity among the affluent during the Depression era. However, its reception suffered, leading to the termination of Demel's three-picture deal with the studio. The film introduces Catherine Demel, the director's daughter, in her debut role, bravely taking a leap into the cinematic world during an airship's costume party. Interestingly, the experimental nature of the production extended to musical compositions two songs were crafted but never integrated into the soundtrack, leaving audiences curious about the potential impact on their viewing experience. Notably, the movie faced challenges at the box office, resulting in a significant financial setback for MGM. The economic downturn of the time, coupled with a saturated market for musicals, contributed to its lackluster performance. The decision to edit out musical numbers from some films before release further underscored the challenging landscape for this cinematic creation. A pivotal scene unfolds in the second half, featuring a surreal Zeppelin party, a visual spectacle that showcases Demel's extravagant vision. Despite its grandeur, the absence of color leaves viewers pondering the questionable allocation of resources during economically challenging times. The juxtaposition of infidelity and opulence in this lavish setting may have been too audacious for its contemporary audience. Recognized as a cult item today, the movie remains a captivating artifact of early sound cinema. It offers a vivid snapshot of a bygone era reflecting Demel's audacious vision and the experimental spirit of the time. The film's shortcomings, both in script and execution, contribute to its unique status in cinematic history, prompting audiences to question what might have been. In conclusion, Madame Satan stands as a testament to the risks and rewards of experimental filmmaking during a turbulent period. Its blend of ambition, peculiarities, and the audacious vision of Cecil B. Demel provides a compelling glimpse into the challenges and triumphs of early sound cinema.